At one point, they bought a tube company called Hytron that put out, you know, electronic tubes for, uh, for radios. And uh, this is before solid state came along. I still have one of those. They had a CBS lab in Stanford, Connecticut that developed exotic devices. Uh, one of the devices they built, they had a glass works up there too. They, blow, they blew glass. And they built a tube that could go in a Mars mission that would be sent on a tour of the outer planets and it would record pictures on a disc and the disc would turn. This is in the 1960s. And I went up and saw the glass works. They had an anechoic chamber for sound. And when you'd walk in it, you'd walk out on a wire frame and you couldn't wait to get out of that thing because it absorbed all of the sound. CBS, you will recall, in the late 1940s came up with a color system which had a spinning wheel. And Dr. Peter Goldmark developed this. And at that time, uh, there was a big contest between NBC and CBS as to which RCA, you know, owned NBC, uh, as to which color system would become the National Television Standards Committee, NTSC, which the British say means never twice the same color. But that's the standard we work on now. Dr. Peter Goldmark said if he'd had an additional month he could have gotten the size of this color wheel down to the size of a dime and had it in a vacuum. Uh, independent of that, uh, I bought two of these systems for the Air Force in our television unit at Lockheed Air Terminal. They were built by Dumont, Dumont Bill 10. And it sounded like you were in a laundromat because the wheel went a rum tum 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 You could hear that thing turning. And if you'd been in a control room with a dozen of these, it, it would have been a noise. But that's the system that finally the astronauts used when they took the first color cameras into space. It was called a field sequential system. You'd put out a red field, a blue field, and a green field. And this is what the color disc did. The company was very much into technology and is responsible for a lot of the technological improvements. In the early 1960, uh, a man named Ray Beindorf who's still alive and still here in town, was executive vice president of the CBS stations division. And he said, why can't we build a small electronic camera that records on some kind of videotape rather than waste all this money on news film and have to wait while the film is developed in a lab before we can put the stories on the air? So he got with a fellow named Joe Flaherty, Dr. Joseph A. Flaherty, who is still with the company, a senior vice president of technology in New York, who'd make a good subject for interviews. And they developed a small handheld Plumacon camera. Uh, they were able to do it because the Plumacon was now here. Now, the, and that went into use at that time. And when Henry Kissinger made his statement about peace is possible in Vietnam, we had one of these cameras uh, wherever he made the speech in Washington. Everyone else was there with a news film camera. And the guard at the door said, uh, no live cameras. And the guy says, this is videotape. He says, what's that? He said, it looks like film. CBS put the program on the air an hour before anyone else had it because he took the cassette out of the camera, the, uh, the cameraman, a kid on a motorcycle ran it back to 2020 M Street in Washington, and we put it on the air, and we scooped the other networks by almost an hour by having mm -hmm. videotape. So immediately, all of the stations went for these small cameras. Now, one of the justifications for that is, well, we'll reuse the tape, and we won't have to buy all that film. We've never erased one inch of tape that I know of in my life. Now, this camera, or this tube, the Plumacon, was built by a Dutch company called Philips because our people were unable to get RCA excited about building a smaller tube. They were fine. And videotape recorders came along in 1955. And my friend Joe Flaherty wanted to decrease the size of the tape recorders, partly for electronic news gathering, partly for better pictures. He could not get 
any of the two-inch tape manufacturers, Ampex, GE, or any of those folks in those days interested in a smaller format, but Sony came along and said, we'll make you one, and they did a one-inch tape recorder. And they said, we're willing to do it because the research we put into this will work fine for a consumer product, a half-inch tape, and we think that's going to be big. Well, you know, when three-quarter inch tape came out, it was, uh, there were certain kinds of motels that uh, would run uh, uh, programs for you in the afternoon if you had nothing better to do. That's what launched the three-quarter inch tape market. Then electronic news gathering at stations uh, forwarded that. So CBS has always been in the forefront of technology. We bought cameras from Philips using these cameras, and they were a softer color and a truer color than the huge cameras that were put out by RCA before. And the market eventually flipped over to this. Now, uh, I think that's probably enough for technology in the 1960s, but that has continued to this day.